Hey what's up everyone, so today I just wanted to revisit a deck which I shared here on the channel a couple months ago because of the recent witch buff. I'm not really gonna go into as much detail as I did with the original guide since the core mechanics and strategies of this deck have not really changed much since then. If you do find this deck to be of interest though, I would strongly recommend checking out the original guide and maybe some other videos I have already uploaded here on the channel such as my Push to Master 1 series. I guess I should really finish up sharing the replays for that eventually, probably when I make a few more uploads if I remember to. Also, in case you missed my last video, let me just put this out there once again. Currently, I will be less active on YouTube here until some exams I'm sitting are over in June, so please forgive me for a lack of uploads until then. Additionally, I am hosting tournaments on Geyser most weekends for both Clash Royale and Brawl Stars, so if you're interested in that, check out Clash Royale and Brawl Stars Amino as well as my own clan's Discord server so you can be notified of when registrations are available. Anyways, let's get on with the video now. So, a couple months ago, like I said before, I started using this deck and I've got to say, I've got a lot of experience under my belt now using it. So for the most part, you can play it as if it's a beatdown deck since the main 1-2 push is a giant with the witch following up close behind him, but there are a number of times where you might end up relying on the miner more heavily because of tough matchups against something like a P.E.K.K.A deck for example. The Miner has many uses in this and many other decks out there so if you're unfamiliar with all the different types of ways that he can be used then make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications as I often give all sorts of tips for different cards and Miner especially is my main card so naturally I would share epic tips and tricks for you guys to learn from. So yeah. Some of my main uses for the Miner would include but are not limited to acting as a secondary tank for your Witch or other support cards when the Giant is about to die. You can also use him to assassinate enemy troops, usually when the Giant is tanking of course, and also to misdirect Tornado and Splash card combos as well as the, uh, you know, the traditional just chip damage and Elixir Collector responses. Anyways, I'll try to showcase these techniques and many others in a dedicated guide to the Miner but for now, uh, these tricks are pretty self-explanatory and pretty easy to remember so if you want to learn how to kite a P.E.K.K.A for example into the opposite lane using a Miner then be sure to check out my video on advanced kiting techniques for that and much more. So in general, the way you're going to be playing my deck is mostly reactive. This means that you're usually going to wait for the opponent to make the first play and as you're responding you need to try your best to identify what deck your opponent could be running so you don't end up making the wrong decisions. If you're up against a golem deck then you can try pressuring the opposite lane when they drop their golem in the back as they'll be very low on elixir. Usually I try to rush with a giant and witch combo at the bridge since it's always been a lethal combo and now with her epic buff recently the witch now leaves behind the skeleton skeletons in her wig so even if they had a hard counter to her and the skeletons already spawned um, from her last uh, breath really, more will follow up and add to their troubles. So at other times you can also try pressuring the opposite lane with a mine and goblin gang rush depending on their card rotations while being careful not to rely on this too much because if they have cards such as a barbarian barrel or log in hand you'll just be feeding them really positive elixir traits. Now in case you're wondering about the Inferno Dragon, he is also a pretty straightforward card to use in that you'll be using him on the enemy's big tanks most of the time unless of course you're playing against Lava Loon, in which case you'd have to try your best to get it to lock onto the balloon since that's your best answer to it. Just watch out for prediction minions and other cards that might mess up the Inferno Dragon in general such as guards or even the E-Wiz or E-Dragon. And as a matter of fact, there are also some times where I may actually use the Inferno Dragon on offense. Yeah, you heard me right there folks, this would be when I am up a lot on Elixir and see an opportunity where I can use him to predict their Valkyrie or Mega Knight which they would typically drop against my uh, Witch really behind the Giant or even a P.E.K.K.A that they might drop against my Giant. Again, I would only do this sort of risky move when I'm already up on Elixir and I know my opponent's cards and rotation so I can play it at the right times so don't think for even a second that I'm just randomly tossing it at the bridge because that would be pretty reckless of anyone to do. Anyways, for my last few tips before we end this video here, I'd just like to re-emphasize how important it is to be patient when using this deck. The only times when you can and should play more aggressively is when you know what your opponent is running, 
when you know the card rotation and also you need to keep an eye on the elixir count so you know when is the best time to punish them as you'll be at a significant advantage in such times. By doing these things, you should be able to overcome most matches but be wary that hard counters do exist and they're very easy to mess up against but with practice, you can learn how to draw out these matches and even in some cases, you can manage to win them too. I have fought so many hard counter decks on ladder so believe me, I know how bad matchups can be at times, heck, I've even fought and won against a deck recently that had like 5 hard counters to my deck. So imagine that guy's reaction to the outcome when he managed to lose despite such an overwhelming advantage. I have that replay saved and there's a chance I might have tossed it into this video somewhere if you're paying attention to the gameplay on the screen and took notice of it but if I didn't include it, I'll just do some more casual videos when my exams are over to just showcase some of that and much more. Anyways. Thank you all so much for your time once again everyone and I'm sorry I'm unable to post more frequently but by now you all should have an idea of how it is. I'm just doing YouTube as a hobby not a career. Also if you guys are enjoying these strategic videos that I'm posting here on the channel be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications to be aware of all future uploads. Believe it or not only a tiny amount of viewers would actually watch to the end of my longer videos and even few of those people would end up subscribing to the channel. So if you want to support me here on YouTube, then make sure to subscribe and keep on watching these videos for all the latest and greatest Clash Royale stuff. So I mean, I might not post that often, but you can be sure that when I do upload, it's going to be quality content. So anyways, hope you all enjoyed the video and have yourselves a wonderful day. Peace out guys.